I have a question for people who believe in the pre-trib rapture. Okay, well, you guys know I'm post-trib. I used to be pre-trib, but I'm going to challenge you guys, okay? Um, I think there's something we can both agree on. Even though you're pre-trib and I'm post-trib, there's a lot of stuff we agree on. For example, we both agree that Jesus Christ, our Savior, is definitely without a doubt preaching a post-trib rapture or gathering together of his elect that happens immediately after the tribulation correct read matthew 24 verse 29 through 42 he says immediately after the tribulation i'm going to gather my elect so we know that's post-trib we know that when he says, believe on me and I will give you eternal life and raise you up on the last day. Right? So we know he is teaching a post-tribulation gathering of his people. This is the problem for you guys. You guys say... Well, no, he's going to gather his elect after the tribulation. And you guys will say, no, 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 no. We're not the elect. That's not us. <laughs> Those are the Jews. We're not the elect. Are you sure about that? Because I love you, I'm going to challenge you. Have you ever done a word search in your Bible program? Because I did. And... Type in the word elect in your King James Bible search program and every single mention of elect is going to pop up. Okay. And I think you're going to see <laughs> you are the elect. If you're in Christ, you are the elect. Here's Paul. He's teaching us that we are the elect. We are the election. Well, I could see your argument where some of you might say, well, that's for the house of Israel. That's not for us. Yeah, we're the elect too, but he's talking about his elect in the house of Israel. Okay. I think we're going to agree that you and I are both saved by the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Well, here in Hebrews 8, 10, Jesus says that that blood covenant he's going to make with the house of Israel. It's hard to see it because my camera is turned around, but he, I'll read it to you. He says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Well, Hebrews 8 and 9 are distinguishing between the old covenant and the new covenant. The new blood covenant by which we are saved. But it was to the house of Israel. But yet we're in that covenant with him. Right? Okay. So you're going to say, well, we're not the house of Israel. Well, I agree that I, I was a stranger and a foreigner to the house of Israel, right? Us Gentiles have always been strangers and foreigners to the house of Israel. But look what Paul says. Flip over to Ephesians 2. Go to verse 19. Paul the Apostle is talking to Gentiles in this chapter. And he says, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So, wait a minute. I am no, I'm a Gentile. I am no more a stranger or foreigner, but a fellow citizen with the saints and of the household of God. Well, what household of God? The house of Israel. 
the one he made a blood covenant with, he opened it up for all. The covenant is you can be in this house if you believe by faith. Remember, if you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed. That's Galatians 3.29. Well, I'm of Christ, so I'm of Abraham's seed. It's through the seed. It's through faith. It's through faith. You know, I, I would strongly urge you guys to do a um, word study on what the house of God is. See, this is the this is every mention of the house of God in the Old Testament. All the way to the New Testament. There God does have a house. He does have a house, and that house does have a name. That is the house of Israel, my friends. And it's not the physical, fleshly house over there in the Middle East. Remember, Paul says in Romans 9, For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. The children of the flesh, these are not God's children. Okay? The children of the flesh, the Jews who rejected him, these aren't his children. These aren't his elect. These aren't his people. They are not of his household. The ones who believe by faith are in God's household. Look at this. Remember when Jesus told the unbelieving Jews, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to another nation, bearing the fruits thereof. Wait, Jesus took the kingdom of God away from the unbelieving Jews and gave it to another nation? Bearing the fruits thereof? Well, what nation was that? China? United States? Greece? Africa? Peter, in his epistles, look it up. He says, no, you're a holy nation. You were, you were in times past not a people, but now you are a people of God called out of darkness into his marvelous light. In Peter's epistle, he says, we are like lively stones building up a spiritual house. See, it's a spiritual house. See, the carnal fleshly house over there, that Israel, that fleshly carnal Israel, who the Lord has called her the harlot, the whore. He said, thou hast for a whore's forehead. It, it, he says that's Jerusalem over there has crucified our Lord. In the book of Revelation, he says that Jerusalem over there is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Paul says Jerusalem now over there is in bondage with her children. But the Israel of God the one who was in this covenant, this blood under this blood covenant with him. This is the true Israel of God. This is the house of Israel. That's the this is the real house of Israel. Um, we are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of his this household of God. Something to <laughs> jump for joy about, really. I mean, if you are under the blood covenant, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died and was buried and rose again for you, if, he believes, if you believe on that, then you're under the blood covenant that was made for the house of Israel. So you can be pre-trib and reject all this and deny it. But tell me this. What household of God is Paul talking about in Ephesians 2? That we are no longer strangers and foreigners of. Does God have two households? I thought God only has one household. And he says a household cannot, a house cannot be divided. Because it can't stand. A house divided will not stand. So 
when Paul says that we're now fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, what house is he talking about then? If you're rejecting what I'm saying to you right now, is there another house? What's the name of that house? Because as far as I can see, the house of God from the Old Testament to the New, these are all every single mention of the house of God. The house of God has a name. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I can find it right here, and it's a green one. This is a, this is a paper that I made um, that Jesus' name is also Israel. And I'm going to prove that to you right now through the scriptures. Very quick, and then I'm going to end my video. In Hosea 11.1, 1, the prophet Hosea said, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. And then Jesus fulfilled that prophecy in Matthew 2.15. And, and what, there was a death until, until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt I have called my son. See, Jesus has many names. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the I Am. He's the first and last. He's Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Jesus has all these names. Israel is one of them. Why do you think Jesus says, if my people, which are called by my name, well, what name is that? The house of Israel, who he made a blood covenant with. That's us, my friends. So in regards to the pre-trib rapture, whenever you guys say, oh, no, that's not for us. That's for the house of Israel. Blood covenant is with the house of Israel. Are you under that covenant? Say yes, because you are under that covenant. <laughs> this is like the cherry on top. You know what I mean? We're not second class citizens in God's household. We're not chopped liver. We're not these stepkids that the Lord's like, oh yeah, they're just my stepkids over there. No. Anybody who... I'll just leave it there. Anybody, you guys just call out on the Lord. Okay? The Lord says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Let him show you. Let him, if you don't believe it, just let God remove the scales from your eyes. And, and don't, don't reject it. Be able to defend it. Be able to say, no, I don't believe that. And this is why. Boom. And then show me. But show me where Paul says that um, we are not part of the household of God. Show me where Paul says we are not fellow citizens. We do not share in the commonwealth of Israel because Paul in Ephesians 2 says we used to be um, aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. But now in Christ, we are uh, made nigh to the commonwealth of Israel. We're of the same household, he says. No longer strangers or foreigners. Show me where Paul says the opposite. Paul says Christ is not divided. The house of the house divided cannot stand. So don't tell me that there's all this division. Paul rebuked people in the book of Corinthians who kept saying, I am of Paul, I am of Cephas, I am of Apollos. He's like, What? We're all yours. Why are you dividing up, causing all this strife? You guys are carnal, not spiritual. I cannot even teach you the meat of the word because you guys are so carnal. Something to think about, my friends. I hope you guys have a blessed Christmas Eve. Peace to all of you.